Uh, is the legacy of Franjo Tuzman's regime in relation to the joint criminal enterprise in Bosnia and Herzegovina in 1993 properly reflected and uh, re-articulated in Croatian public space? We can certainly say, having in mind transcripts and historical documents, that the role of Franjo Tuzman in this uh, historical process was a negative one. And certainly we can say that he is responsible for uh, uh, collaboration with advocates of Greater Serbia. Uh, nevertheless, international politics, international community did uh, uh, condemn uh, and Franjo Tuđman and also uh, Croatian uh, politics and this criminal enterprise in Bosnia and Herzegovina. We can also say that Stipe Mesic, ex-president of Croatia, uh, did something in that uh, in that uh, um, uh, direction? Uh, retired great number of uh, nationalist generals, uh, which was definitely a, an ambiguous gesture of condemnation. However, Croatian politics today. Uh, did nothing in that direction. Uh, so, uh, six uh, generals involved in uh, Croatian criminal po politics in Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, during the 90s were convinced, uh, uh, convicted, uh, together uh, 111 years of prison in uh, 2017. Uh, however, President Kolinda Grabar Kitarovic uh, refused to take away uh, medals and tributes. Uh, from them and also Premier uh, Andrei Plenković uh, did nothing in that direction. So we can certainly say that this uh, uh, actual politics uh, did not condemn those uh, criminal actions. Uh, on what ideas and principles is the process of historical revisionism in Croatia based? Also, what is the relation of these processes with the re-legitimization of the independent state of Croatia and uh, in general what will be actually the ideological foundations and agendas and contest in the Cold War against socialism and its legacy. Well, historical revis uh, revisionism um, is not something specific for Croatia, although it is one of the major uh, problems in Croatia today. Uh, actually, EU opened Pandora's box uh, with uh, 209 uh, European Parliament resolution on a European consciousness and totalitarianism, which uh, tried, which aimed to equalize so-called two totalia, uh, totalitarianism. So uh, totalitarianism, uh, communism and fascism. So um, in equating what cannot be equated, we cannot equate uh, uh, fascism based on uh, racist laws with uh, communism uh, as vision of better future, of uh, future of solidarity, democracy, uh, equal rights for all. Um, actually, EU opened this Pandora's box of um, uh, transcending, I would say, this uh, uh, historical utopian uh, moment of uh, communist idea ideas and uh, what Alain Badiou said, it is a uh, hypothesis, it is, it is communist hypothesis. It needs to be uh, uh, rethinked again. By, uh, but by this equation, actually what happened with the uh, European Union, uh, we uh, mm, deleted the possibility of uh, thinking about better future. And uh, this is the case also in Croatia and in European U Union, I would say, um, to totalitarianism uh, ended up with a story uh, um, every revolution is violent, it is better that we um, secure status quo than to have bloody revolution, etc. However, we see riots throughout Europe, especially in France today, from uh, November uh, uh, 2018, we are experiencing uh, fights, guerrilla fights on the streets, so uh, uh, fewer and fewer people um, rely on that story about uh, not having the possibility of better utopian ideas. Of course, we can also say that these utopian ideas are not formulated, they are not related to strong 
um, uh, ideas related to uh, communist ideas related um, directly to some kind of um, uh, political uh, and economic theory behind it, but nevertheless we cannot say that this status quo is uh, today uh, possible anymore. Uh, from this perspective of Croatia, I would say that in, in this uh, in our auto-colonial uh, uh, perspective, we often force the idea that our, our nationalism is something exclusive and unprecedented. Well, I would say that Austria had their revival of raci racism and neo-Nazism uh, with Austrian Freedom Party, Jörg Haider, and recently Norbert uh, Hofer. It was really a really interesting situation. A few uh, days ago, my party, Radnička Fronta, uh, protested at Bleiburg against uh, Croatian fascists that commemorates, commem uh, commemorate, as they say, innocent Croatian soldiers. Among them, they were slaughterers from Jasenovac also. Um, at the same time, uh, Austrian television and media revealed the tape in which far-right politician Hans Christian Strache, uh, vice chancellor of Austria, spoke uh, with women uh, posing as Russian uh, oligarch, discussing uh, and providing the FPO positive news coverage in return, of, uh, in return uh, for business. Uh, contracts, it was obviously a um, situation uh, of, um, in which I would say uh, we reveal the nationalist project, um, reveal its uh, fallacy. Uh, nationalist uh, project only covers the business as usual, I would say, of capital and capitalistic elites. There is nothing um, fundamental and specific uh, for blood and soil uh, um, a story and discourse in this national politics and it is uh, something that we uh, certainly share with Austrian and every uh, other national politics. So this creation revisionism as well as European uh, revisionism, uh, from my point of view, has only one major purpose, to discredit the idea of better society, so to say, as every an emancipatory project ends in blood, if uh, communism uh, is same as uh, fascism, capital can go on with its business as usual, because nobody cares, so to say. So, so you would say that, uh, that the process of historical revisionism, revisionism is, is in Croatia is not at all exclusive, that, it is, uh, that you're saying that it's uh, directly connected with a similar process is taking place in, in the first world, in, in, the, in Western Europe. And I would say that um, a critique of political economy could, could provide us with uh, uh, somehow a specific view on this problem. And um, it is a fact that uh, capital is always concentrating in the center and always dividing people. So to say, and we have the situation in which uh, European Union uh, is itself um, forcing and uh, uh, promoting a very unusual uh, politics. Uh, uh, of equating to totalitarianism, and I would say that uh, this divides the uh, center of Europe with the periphery of Europe, and also at the same time it divides uh, specific capitalist elites and a uh, major population that is totally discredited in this neoliberal process of uh, privatization, deregulation, flexibilization. So in these processes we have situation in which uh, nationalism and uh, new forms of neo-fascism uh, work very well uh, in the uh, project of elites in dividing people. So uh, it is very um, dangerous perspective um, that we are uh, um, uh, somehow using, from my point of view, uh, too often, that is autocolonialism. Autocolonialism is a very danger, dangerous perspective in which we are uh, to be told that we have something, some specific form of nationalist politics. Of course, we cannot hide the fact that it is the, one of the major problems in Croatia and in region. Uh, generally, but 
we must see what is the uh, economic purposes of this revisionism. Uh, every time I see uh, Kolinda Grabar Kitarovic in, in, at Bleiburg uh, commemorating uh, victims that end up um, on the wrong side of the history, victims among which there, uh, there were uh, um, uh, not at all innocent uh, slaughterers from Yasenovats, I see a very um, important question why this is happening. Is she so blind not to see that those innocent victims are far from that? I would say that it is not uh, that it is not some kind of blindness. That it is some kind of very uh, dangerous political and economic project that hides uh, capital and capital, uh, capitalist um, subversion of this pro project that ended up, uh, we must say also that it ended up with. Um, a Cold War, which, which ended up in the 90s, but we have to be aware that this project that equates to totalitarianism has its purpose. It is not some kind of blind, of, um, bloody, uh, totally um, necrophilic uh, folklore that we are facing with. This project, project has its purpose, and this purpose must be analyzed. It was for me even more interesting to see that actually now the Austrians, the right-wing uh, Austrian uh, party was the one who actually made the distance toward what was going on in Bliberg. Um, and uh, my question will be um, how you read uh, this situation because uh, um, uh, practically they are both uh, ultra hyper nationalistic racist but uh, on the um, much wider arena it uh, uh, seemed that they started to play two different roles nationalists often work together but in this case it wasn't the case and i would say that uh, nationalism in austria didn't see any kind of uh, purpose of uh, providing a background for our, our nationalism. But also, you can hear from uh, Hasan Begovic and Nesik uh, or, uh, or other nationalists in Croatia, uh, very interesting uh, perspective. They often talk about um, a world, world and society of uh, not totalitarian, I would say, perspective, some kind of um, a world in which they also uh, very often uh, accuse uh, this nationalism and this fascism. They say that they are for some kind of uh, equal, uh, equal society of equal rights and they are not uh, pronouncing fascism, that this fascism is, some kind, is misinterpreted, or very often we have this discourse of misinterpretation, we are not fascists. And uh, very often it, it is a comical uh, gesture because we see that they are obvious fascists, but they are uh, talking about um, this of, uh, they are distancing from a fascism. It is a kind of discursive practice, I would say, nothing else. And uh, in this case, um, Austrian uh, politicians uh, didn't see any uh, purpose of uh, providing break background for our uh, politicians. Wendy Brown uh, spoke and wrote about this um, practice. Uh, Slavoj Žižek talked about and, and write about this practice in which we have this society that promotes uh, democracy, tolerance, equal rights. At the same time, it is providing uh, uh, ground for new, new forms on, of inequality. And these new forms of uh, proto-racism, I would say, uh, promotes uh, economic racism. And it is a new form of uh, racism. All of the, these elites and uh, this uh, recent uh, situation with Austrian uh, right-wingers, it's uh, symptomatic for that uh, situation, um, that this only provides cover for, uh, for some kind of economic policy that is going on behind. Of course, we have uh, liberals, we have, uh, we have democratic parties, uh, social democrats, uh, far right, uh, working at the same direction of uh, neoliberal policies that we can't call, we can um, 
named uh, as proto-racist politics because they provide uh, a ground for inequality and systematic corruption that is uh, providing a, a situation and society in which a um, high majority of people cannot uh, even uh, have this uh, equal rights on the ground of, of this totally formal and, and, and uh, necessary rights as um, food, as uh, a housing for all, as uh, um, education, public and uh, free education for all, all and uh, a situation in which we cannot provide medical care for all. So these basic rights are um, in the uh, are, are not uh, provided for very, uh, a very large uh, number of people. So uh, we can say that this is a proto-fascism and it, it has many forms. Of course, I cannot say that we can equate uh, European right with social democrats, but European right is uh, often only playing a folklore game for the majority of people because majority of people has this um, very um, uh, a dangerous, um, unequal situation in which they are finding themselves. One protester in, protester in France said um, that uh, he don't want to live in a society in which he has to uh, live in order to work, that he, has, he want to work in order to live. If uh, this uh, uh, racism is not just in the public space, but is also very present in the institutional framework, you talk about uh, rationalized economies. So, um, uh, how uh, is uh, this uh, um, seen in the Croat society? I would say that, it, from my point of view, it uh, was really an important moment uh, um, when we had this some kind of transition. Um, Croatian homo homogenization during the 90s was built on foundations of typical uh, boundary discourse, uh, ante murale Christianis, uh, the last bastion of, um, bastion of uh, Europeanness beyond which lay the uncivilized and violent uh, geopolitical expanse of the Balkans. This particular geopolitical imaginary was, uh, however, characteristic not only of, again, of Croatian ident identifications, identification, but also of other national identifications created through international homogenization and opposition to the others. So it was uh, thematized, it was analyzed by many orientalists. For example, Milica Bakic Haydn used uh, the term um, nesting orientalism to refer to the pattern of how the original dichotomy upon which orientalism is uh, premised is reproduced. And this uh, 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 nesting orientalism, to cut the story short, uh, functioned um, in a way that every uh, nationalist would say that a uh, country um, that is uh, further south is a Balkan. So for us, Bosnia and Herzegovina was Balkan, uh, and Serbia was Balkan, for Slovenia, uh, Croatia was Balkan, for Austria, Slovenians were um, violent uh, Balkans, and um, so on. But uh, during this um, um, immigrant crisis, as it was, um, uh, it was uh, this Cursively formed in the media, we had some kind, uh, some uh, kind of different and um, uh, the form of nationalism and transformation of uh, net nationalism. 2014-15, um, and uh, during the closing of borders in um, in Croatia, uh, this period was referred as refugee crisis. During this period, we experienced. Uh, um, a embracing of the Western Euro European uh, xenophobia. And this nationalist and uh, fascist discourse was completely different. 
from those uh, uh, before. It was, uh, so to say, imaginary ident identification with the West. So Croatians tried to look like Westerners and uh, reproduced this kind of discourse. It was very uh, symptomatic that Austrian uh, right-wingers did not back up uh, Croatian right-wingers in this case of Bleiburg. And on the other side, our nationalists and uh, racists and the fascists tried to uh, embrace this kind of dis this discourse in discursive practices that they um, learned in this process, um, mostly online, um, symbolizing Western Europe as uh, fundamental, uh, symbolic, uh, so to say, um, uh, um, other to uh, to Balkans. So uh, unlike uh, um, Europe as big big other, the refugee assumed the role of the little other. I would say the imaginary other. Uh, the refugees as the little other occupied the same position, and it was interesting. Same position in the structure of identification that used to be occupied by Serbs. Uh, Slovenians and Bosnians, as well as other nations in Yugoslavia. And in this process, um, uh, I saw by analyzing these online uh, practices, these discursive practices, that um, in many ways, internet uh, functioned as the public uh, sphere, uh, sphere's unconsciousness. So in this way, this crisis and the images of refugees uh, always uh, uh, functioned as unofficial, uninstitutionalized, um, uh, and in a way uncentralized uh, media practices. Um, it was really interesting to see how these uh, statements uh, pertaining to refugees um, uh, uh, so some kind of tendency of uh, sleeping away from the issues at hand into more peripheral content, um, where the signifier refugees <laughs> begins to fill with various other elements, such as uh, f famine or, f or poverty, uh, the war in Croatia, the Balkans and the Balkanization of Croatia, um, the state as penetrated body, it was interesting, uh, terrorism, filth, animalism. Those issues were totally unconnected with refugees, but somehow this discourse slipped in this direction. So the internet speech about refugees appears almost as authentic speech of the unconsciousness divided, uh, defined as the part of the psyche composing um, as uh, one um, uh, major theoretician of psychoanalysis re say the repress uh, repressed contents which have been uh, denied uh, access to the preconscious uh, system uh, major politicians played a major role in this transgression of nationalism in croatia as hebrang for example he provided us with really interesting metaphors uh, and other nationalists also. I would, won't go into details uh, here, but it was really interesting to see how this transition of um, classical um, orientalist, uh, actually, um, nationalism transcendent into more European uh, nationalism, in which uh, the most important uh, thing politically was to see how our nationalism tried to uh, reproduce and try to form symbolical other, European uh, symbolical other in this nationalist uh, discourse in which we were tried, trying so pathetically, I would say, to look, look like uh, um, uh, right-wingers in Germany, for example, in, or Austria. What is going on with the Serbian, for example, minority? Our uh, far right is um, um, playing, so to say, with those minorities. They need those minorities in order to establish themselves as uh, out of tone, uh, authentic uh, Croatian right wingers. I would say that it is also interesting that um, a political center is not any more interested in, in uh, direct confrontation with these practices, and I think that this is really dangerous because at Bleiburg only Radnička Fronta and uh, Austrian radical left and uh, Slovenian ra uh, radical left decided to come at the same day at the same uh, time at the same place 
uh, when a Croatian Ustasha gathering was happening at the Bleiburg. That was the moment uh, when we had to be there not few days before, not few days afterwards, which, uh, which happened with the um, uh, uh, Slovenian left came few days before uh, and also Croatian um, uh, anti-fascist came few days before. We had to be there on the same day at the same place and we have to confront this uh, uh, very dangerous uh, right-wing um, uh, Ustasha gathering. At the same time, uh, those practices unfortunately um, is uh, <laughs> in a way left uh, and um, uh, totally um, redirected to the radical left as if we are responsible to mm -hmm. act against this uh, uh, fascism and this uh, right-winger um, uh, formats and this center, social democrat center and uh, liberal left is um, too good to uh, oppose these practices uh, and confront these practices uh, in life. In the same context, uh, would you say, would you then say <clears throat> that uh, anti-fascism anti uh, was deprived of its connection with uh, socialism and or anti-capitalist mm -hmm. struggles? Definitely, definitely. Uh, that is the most dangerous uh, form in which anti-fascism, this uh, uh, civil form of anti-fascism, is divided from communist perspective, and we always say that anti-fascism was a communist anti-fascism and communists were those guys who organized uh, anti-fascist fights in uh, Yugoslavia at the moment and uh, we are uh, often uh, faced with this transgression of civil anti-fascism. Uh, this goes in the same uh, gesture in the same uh, political transgression of um, to totalitarianism, of this um, very dangerous political narrative that we had this fascism on the one side and we have this communism on the other side and communism was the same as fascism and neoliberals are promoting this narrative, not right-wingers in this traditional sense, but right neoliberals are producing this uh, narrative that uh, we have those totalitarian practices and we must learn from the history that uh, never uh, again we should go back to uh, socialist and communist ideas of uh, equal rights uh, social uh, rights for all, um, uh, better society and uh, opportunity for every individual to develop in full force for uh, him or herself. And uh, this narrative is uh, in Croatia very, very strong and uh, all, all again we have this uh, historical um, experience that we should look back and see how neoliberalism is uh, complotting with uh, uh, right-wing politics and nationalist politics every time when, when capital is at danger. So um, often is um, uh, promoted from uh, our political center that we, sh that we should never go back. I would sh say that we should go back and learn from these historical practices as example and see how uh, neoliberalism and a liberal uh, uh, economic liberal politics will always uh, complot with the right-wingers if they have some kind of interest in this uh, uh, so even uh, today we cannot only uh, oppose this fascism uh, as, kind, uh, as some kind of folklore. And also we cannot promote socialism in some kind of folklore and in some kind of um, rememberous practices, um, uh, culture of remembering, uh, historical musealism, so to say, 
we must uh, remember socialism uh, at its core as a, a live and vivid uh, political and historical uh, um, possibility of better society, more equal society, democratic society. Of course, we have to learn uh, our lesson from real uh, existing socialisms and see how socialisms failed in many ways that it was social um, um, failure in many uh, ways, in many perspectives, but uh, we cannot uh, certainly equate uh, communist ideas with uh, fascist ideas. The memory of socialism is actually uh, co-opted by institutions, so we have today also a big trend, for example, to remember the non-aligned movement, as something actually just as a um, narrative or a cultural artifact, but uh, not to think of these uh, elements uh, that actually can open really a vision for the future. So my question will be, um, uh, what is the role of the institutions uh, and also the uh, systems of knowledge, uh, the way of how um, history is now retaken by institutions of public, uh, let's say, importance in all these uh, processes. The best way uh, to, um, to murder those ideas, to uh, be sure that uh, they will be uh, murdered and killed, is to m musealize those ideas, to make them, um, to uh, approach them in the form of uh, museal performance, in the form of culture of memory. What, uh, what would be the way uh, or one of the ways uh, how class prefixed social uh, conflict could be uh, reactualized in Croatia and or uh, in the uh, in the space of former Yugoslavia, let's say. Certainly, we have to uh, be very uh, specific on what is left in Croatia, what is left in the region, and we have to uh, provide uh, bridges be, be, uh, between our left and the left in region because we have to oppose European Union, not because European Union is, is very um, some kind of bad institution or some kind of, of um, villain, but because uh, capital elites are uh, forming this European Union in this specific way uh, that is, uh, um, that is uh, bringing us and that is pushing us at a, a political economic periphery, both uh, Croatia that is in uh, European Union and Slovenia that is European Union and Serbia that is trying to enter this uh, uh, European uh, community, but we have to uh, we have to build those bridge bridges because uh, only in this um, regional form we have we can and we have the opportunity to oppose these neoliberal practices of deregulation of everything, privatization of everything, and flexibilization of every uh, uh, possible uh, of every job. So we have to. Um, in, from my point of view, democratic socialism is uh, a form. Um, of this uh, political um, um, actualization of socialism. It is a political um, term that um, is often uh, disregarded as um, oxymoron because uh, what is the point of saying that socialism is democratic? Because if it is socialism, it is democratic. But nevertheless, we have to um, reflect uh, real uh, existing socialism and uh, reflect the uh, failures of real existing socialism and um, reflect those failures um, of deficit of democracy at the first place and uh, um, uh, uh, reaffirm socialism in a way that we stress the importance of democratic protagonism of every individual in this society that socialism cannot be a project of political elites. So we have to form a different um, organization, different kind of uh, mobilization of, uh, of masses. And this uh, recruitation of masses uh, should be uh, formed on democratic protagonism. Every individual has uh, equal rights and has the opportunity to start a revolution, so to say, and to start political formations. So uh, we have to 
from my point of view, uh, democratic socialism would be uh, some kind of answer. Of, uh, of course, we have to also acknowledge that uh, democratic socialism is um, differently uh, uh, described and uh, defined in, for example, America where Ber Bernie Sanders uh, almost promotes some kind of uh, going back to, uh, to position of welfare state uh, uh, it, um, it is somebody would say that uh, uh, this is a, some kind of social uh, democratic policies, nothing more, uh, nothing less. We have Jeremy Corbyn uh, in UK that is promoting democratic socialism. We are always struggling in Croatia, but also um, this is not a specific uh, for Croatian politics, that we, do, we are uh, constantly struggling with social democrats who are trying to promote some kind of um, so, uh, social, but also entrepreneurial uh, form of socialism or socialistic practices, ending up uh, um, at uh, the end in a uh, 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 complete failure as, as we saw in uh, Syriza, uh, as we saw in, um, in um, uh, recently in Portugal, as we saw in uh, Spain. We have to also, uh, we have to address this problem of um, constituting uh, socialist politics on the basis of some kind mild uh, reformist um, uh, neo-Keynesian uh, practices and political and economic uh, forms of more and higher taxation, um, some kind of redistribution, some kind of identity politics. But uh, as we experienced uh, in these examples in Greece, in uh, Spain, in Portugal and uh, elsewhere, we have to be aware that, okay, we, ha we can do that. This is be, that, that will be more um, equal society. Uh, nevertheless, this will be more uh, a democratic society. Uh, nevertheless, but uh, this uh, re reformist uh, socialist practices will end up in social democracy and social democracy um, uh, in every crisis uh, uh, actually um, uh, provided us with the examples of how they choose capital in this game of ca uh, capital with a human face or capital with uh, socialist practices or uh, capital with more uh, social uh, equality, democracy and so on. Uh, in crisis, uh, social democrats or liberal socialists um, uh, dressing as socialists uh, at the end will choose capital.